Supreme Court is an institution meant to be beyond both influence and reproach, held in esteem by the general public, and one governed by the facts and laws argued before it. Unfortunately, as we will hear today, that might not always be the case. That was House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler Thursday opening a hearing into what Democrats claim is a decades-long lobbying campaign by the religious right aimed at influencing the Supreme Court's Republican-appointed justices. The hearing comes amid accusations that Justice Samuel Alito leaked the decision in the 2014 Hobby Lobby contraception case, charges that Alito denies and that the Supreme Court's legal counsel has dismissed. Joining me now is Mark Paoletta, who testified at Thursday's hearing. He serves as a lawyer in the George H.W. Bush and Trump administrations, where he worked on the nominations of Justices Thomas, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh. He's co-author of the book, Created Equal, Clarence Thomas in His Own Words. So, Mark, nice to see you uh, uh, after many years. I don't think we've talked in a while. So uh, let's talk about first this accusation by Mr. Rob Schenck that uh, uh, ha something happened in 2014. Now in 2022, he comes forward and says that he was told by uh, a, a, a woman that Justice Alito had leaked the uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, decision to come. How credible is that accusation? Uh, Paul, thanks for having me on. I think it's completely incredible. In fact, the two participants to that conversation, Justice Alito and Gail Wright, uh, the Wrights were having dinner with the Alitos, both deny it. And, and the backdrop is that Rob Schenck has told many lies over his life. And in, in fact, a, federal, a, a, a judge, a federal judge, found that he lied repeatedly under oath. He himself, in his memoirs uh, on a blog post, said that he um, has lied and told consequential lies, many consequential lies. So it's somebody that you just can't believe. And it's so out of character, right? I don't believe Justice Alito would ever do anything like that. There's no record of him doing something like that. So to have this hearing with such a flawed witness who has, in my view, zero credibility, um, just shows how desperate the congressional Democrats are to smear the Supreme Court. You know, they don't like the opinions that are coming down from the Supreme Court now, right? The, in the past, the Supreme Court, whether they were Republican presidents or, or Democrat presidents, the Supreme Court was this reliable institution to impose these progressive policies as sort of an activist court. And I think they realize now that they have these justices on the court that have been appointed who are originalists, who understand their role in our society and are not going to do that and, in fact, may reverse some of these, um, these liberal opinions. And so the, so the Democrats want to destroy the Supreme Court. I really do believe that that's what's going on. They want to take down this institution um, because and, and they're driving this narrative um, so that the American people lose trust in the Supreme Court. Uh, that's uh, quite a quite a uh, an accusation. Uh, uh, the the hearing itself, though, was called undue influence, um, uh, operation uh, higher court and politicking at the Supreme Court. What's the go what what's the immediate goal? Because Jerry Nadler talked about ethics on the court. Are they at the, does Congress want to impose some kind of ethics code on the court? Of course, the court has its own ethics code already. What do they want to do that the court is not doing? So, again, they claim that all of these examples that they point to, and again, this, this uh, so-called Operation Higher Court, which was this, this project that Rob Schenck claims he had to influence the conservative justices, um, it, there, there was nothing wrong with any of these interactions, as far as I can tell. And everything in terms of all the accusations against Justice Thomas, Chief Justice Roberts, uh, Justice Barrett, all of these attacks that the, the Democrats and the media have been making on these justices, none of them add up to any kind of ethical problem. The, the justice who probably had the, the closest to the line, if you will, and may have crossed it, was Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But the press and the Democrats lionized her. Um, and so— um, they want they, they they want the Supreme Court to impose an ethics code. Right now, the the Supreme Court uses the the, the judicial conference ethic code as a guide, but there's no reason for mm -hmm. them to have to do that right now because they're, in my view, inventing these scandals against the the conservative Supreme Court justices.
When you mentioned Justice Ginsburg, was that her relationship with Nina Totenberg, the, the journalist, uh, uh, by the way, which is not illegal either. There's nothing wrong with uh, going to dinner with journalists or even confiding in them. I don't mind if justices confide in journalists, speaking as a journalist, but I, 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 you know, I know a lot of judges, and I can't remember one who would be, uh, conf has ever told me in advance of what they would rule in a case. Not one. Right. And I know I'm pretty close to a lot of judges. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the time that Ju Ju Justice Ginsburg uh, attacked candidate Donald Trump during the presidential campaign ah, okay. and, and, and trashed him for not releasing his taxes and then sat on a case in 2020 that was exactly on Justice uh, on President Trump's uh, argument that he didn't have to disclose his taxes and she didn't recuse herself. Uh, so things like that uh, in terms of Justice Ginsburg's conduct. Okay. Where does this go? Is this going to just uh, fade away now that Democrats don't have the House or is this going to going to keep up? Well, certainly, I think it will stop in the House, um, but I do think that the Senate, with uh, Senator Durbin and Senator Whitehouse, who has—I think Senator Whitehouse has been the most active senator in trying to undermine the Supreme Court with this so-called dark money-type uh, allegations, which, again, are, in my view, completely bogus. Uh, so they may do hearings, they may look into it, but, again, I think the general— attack by the Democrats and the, and the media on the Supreme Court will continue. And I think it's important to, to push back and show why it doesn't add up and why there's an agenda that's a political agenda to attack the Supreme Court. All right. Uh, Mark Paoletta, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Appreciate it.